Hello Year 10. By the end of this video, you should be able to confidently plan and write a comparative essay on remains and bayonet charge. This will be part of paper two of your English Literature GCSE and this should give you an opportunity to practice those essay skills that we've been working on since September. Um, don't forget a notepad um, so you can take any notes that you need for your writing. So first up, um, we've just got a bit of a recap of the different poetic methods that you might have to analyse in the two poems. Analysing methods is essential in literature, so if there's any methods on here that you don't know, pause the video, jot them down and find out the definition so you're confident in using the subject terminology. Okay, just before we begin, Let's just remind ourselves of the step-by-step -step approach that we take in nearly any literature question. So your first instinct is probably to just dive straight in and start annotating and writing. But from my experience, spending a bit more time planning and thinking about your answer delivers the most marks. So step one is reading and highlighting the question. Number two, planning some ideas around the question focus. Number three, annotating the poems and planning your ideas for both poems. Number four, writing your introduction, beginning with both. Number five, writing around four paragraphs. Number six, checking over your work. So today I'm just going to take you through steps one to five with some models just so you feel confident in approaching the question. So let's begin. The steps are in the left hand corner if you want to refer to those. The question is, compare how poets present the effects of war in remains and bayonet charge. It's worth 30 marks. And I'm going to highlight the effects of war because that's our question focus. A lot of people um, skip step two, but it's actually really helpful to help generate some ideas. I know a lot, um, some people are anxious in exams, they run out of things to say, they don't write enough, and that's what stops them from getting the marks that they need. So this is a good kind of tip, really. All you have to do is mind map what the question focus makes you think of, not related to the poems, but just in general. So when I think of the effects of war, I think of these things. Death, injury, pain, destruction, violence, bloodshed, mental trauma, PTSD, guilt and damage. So that means now I have eight possible things to look for in these, po in these two poems. So step three is where you plan your ideas and annotate the poem. And I'm going to do it the other way around because rather than just jumping in and annotating, I want to have a clear idea of what the poems are and how they link to the effect of war. So for Remains, I know from memory that this is written in a first person perspective. It's a true story um, based on the documentary. It's available on YouTube, you should watch it. Also, I know the key theme of this poem is guilt, um, responsibility and the trauma that the soldier suffers afterwards. I know structurally, that there is a volta in this poem, a turning point, and that's when he comes home on leave, and that's when it switches from the war to the present, and it shows us that the PTSD is still continuing. And the form of this poem, there's lots of enjambment and an irregular rhythm, which creates a sense of confusion as he questions himself. Now for bayonet charge, I know that this is a third person perspective, um, the poet's father served in World War I, but this poem was written much after. Key themes in this poem are fear and the futility or pointlessness of war. Confusion again pops up. I know structurally in stanza two there's a bit of a shift because everything seems to slow down and he starts to question what the point of war is. And then I know in this poem there are loads of similes and metaphors to try and put into words an event which is quite indescribable to most of us. 
actually this poem is quite confusing with the amount of imagery that it uses to try and convey the chaos of warfare. So now I've jogged my memory, I can start to come up with some comparative points that, which pull together the two poems. So there's my list. Um, for example, bullet point one. So both poems have a negative impact on the individual soldiers. That's true of both of them. But they do, they do it in different ways. So in Remains, it's written in first person to try and show us the remorse, to make us empathise with him. Whereas in Bayonet Charge, it's different. It's written in the third person perspective. It creates a reader, it creates a sense that the reader's watching his suffering on the battlefield and maybe reflects the poet's attempt to write about an experience his father lived through, but he didn't experience for himself. So now we've got our ideas, we can move on to our annotations. So I've got the two poems here. You could pause it if you want to reread them. But as you can see, these are the things I've picked out. I've highlighted some key quotes to evidence the ideas in my plan. This isn't the time for you to go full throttle and annotate everything. I couldn't annotate it on my laptop, which is a bit annoying, but I'll just talk you through two of my ideas. So looking at the yellow highlights, we can see that the poems both poems start in medias res, in the middle of the action, which emphasises to us the chaos of war. So in Remains, on another occasion, shows us it's not the first time. Perhaps there are other events that are on the soldier's conscience and that he seems quite used to being at war. Conversely, in Bayonet Charge, the adverb suddenly creates a sense of shock and surprise. It shows us that the soldier is on edge at all times. And the fact that he suddenly awoke kind of gives a bit of a nightmarish tone to it. Like you can just be suddenly woken up out of your sleep and out of your dreams. Another one I'll talk about is the green one. So we can see in both poems, the green quotes show the use of repetition which show us that the soldiers are almost lost for words trying to describe the war. In Remains, the repetition of probably armed, possibly not, shows us that the soldier is questioning himself. And it kind of highlight, highlights to us the guilt he feels in what has happened to the looter. The adverbs probably and possibly evoke a sense of uncertainty. And it's a question that, is never answered. We don't know whether the looter did have a weapon on him. Whereas in Bayonet Charge, we've got this repetition of raw twice in the first two lines. So raw has connotations of pain, injury, perhaps foreshadowing what will happen to the soldier later on. But also raw can mean not fully formed, not fully completed which kind of links to the context of World War I. Um, in World War I, there were a lot of young soldiers under 18. The country was very patriotic, and so a lot of men enlisted. So there were um, almost, well, a significant proportion of the generation that died in the war. So I have highlighted some other bits. I'm not going to go through them all, but perhaps you could see if you could draw the link between um, the different coloured quotes. So now we've got our plan, we're moving on to our introduction. Now, our introduction gives you the opportunity to lead your line of argument. I've written, it looks like a lot, but it's not too much. I've started with a comparison. I've written two sentences on remains, two sentences on bayonet charge, and then finally brought them back together and compared them. So I know a lot of you struggle with an introduction, so I've just given you some tips. I would start with both or both poems to force you to make that comparison. I would explain what each poem 
shows us about the question focus, which is the effects of war. Use your comparison connectives. So I've used in contrast because it's a difference at, in the start of the blue section. Keep it short. It shouldn't be more than I've written uh, six sentences. Shouldn't be really too much more than that. And you should use it to lead your analysis. So if you get stuck, you could always talk about the perspectives, um, which I've done. So, for example, is it first person, third person? Is the speaker guilty, crazy? Are they patriotic? So those are all things you could bring into an introduction. So my introduction is um, both Bayonet Charge and Remains present the indescribable horrors of war through the impact on individual soldiers. Remains uses first-person perspective to convey the events that lead up to a soldier's battle with PTSD. The poet uses this to present a soldier's true account of his time in Iraq and helps the reader to see the realities of war. In contrast, Bayonet Charge is written in third person, creating a distance between the soldier and the reader. The fact that he is the only human mentioned even though he must be surrounded by other soldiers, makes him seem isolated and alone. Both poems present war as having negative effects through the isolation and mental trauma to those involved. So as you can see there, I've tried to follow the tips and keep it as straightforward as possible, but still show the person marking it that I fully understand both poems and I try to keep it focused on the effects of war. Okay, so now we've got our plan. We're moving on to the main section. So step five is where you write the rest of your essay. You might use peel paragraphs if that's something that you do. You should include language and structural points, but I've just written um, a language comparison paragraph here. So I've given you some tips that you might want to use. So to get started, you pick a point from your plan. So for example, both use colloquial language, both use repetition. And then you can start to write. I would always try to start with the poem you're strongest on and write a peel paragraph. Then use a comparison connective, saying whether it's similar or different, and then write a peel paragraph about the second poem. You need to check that you have analysed methods. That's the most important part, and that's the part that will get you the marks. If you've not written enough, you need to think about the themes, the atmosphere created, the tone, is it somber, is it happy, is it jovial? You could zoom in on one word, you could explore the connotations, you could link back to the title, you could analyze the significance of it. And I always try to include this is significant because at some point to really show that you understand it. And that should help you bulk up your answer for maybe writing half a page to be able to get out a page and a half, which should push up your marks, really. OK, here's my response. Cut out the bottom a little bit there. So just before I start, um, the green bit at the bottom and um, in the middle, that's where I've done my comparison. And the underlined purple words are the methods that I have analysed. So as you can see, I'm not necessarily written two peels because I have got a few different bits in there. And you don't have to feel restricted to peel, but it can be helpful. OK, so I'll read mine now. <clears throat> in Remains, the poet establishes the death of the looter as a haunting memory that the speaker cannot escape from. He describes that the looter is here in my head, dug in behind enemy lines. This metaphor and use of war imagery highlights that the soldier is constantly reliving the past. Perhaps this shows his struggle to adjust to normal life at home, as this also becomes a battleground against his PTSD and addiction problems. The verb dug 
shows how deeply embedded the soldier's regret is, as he seems to take sole responsibility for the man's death, creating a sense of isolation. This is further evidenced by the final couplet, is bloody life in my bloody hands. By separating these last two lines, the speak, sorry, the poet shows that the effects of war are carried on into the present, affecting the speaker's everyday life long after war has ended. <clears throat> now I move on to my second poem. In contrast, Bayonet Charge focuses on the immediate effects of war while fighting the enemy. The poet establishes a scene of chaos using verbs like running, stumbling and plunged, which creates an image of the soldier's desperation and fear for his life. The description of the yellow hair that rolled like a flame, its mouth wide open, silent, shows the reader how war has negative effects on nature. The juxtaposition of mouth wide open, silent, symbolises the overwhelming fear experienced by the soldier. This contrasts the speaker in Remains, who shows no fear when he is shooting the looter. So, I could write a little bit more, I just didn't want to squeeze too much on the slide. So that end bit there, um, contrasting the speaker in Remains, who shows no fear, I could link it to that quote about uh, three of us letting fly. I could talk about the colloquial language. I might move on in my next paragraphs to talk about the structure, the use of enjambment in both poems, or them both starting in media res, medias res. And this um, kind of paragraph is quite successful. One, because there's a lot of analysis of methods. It's very clear in the points it's trying to make. This paragraph here is about the effect of war and whether it's just in that moment or whether it continues on. So you could use my ideas. You could definitely use my planning. You can use some of my sentences, but obviously don't copy the whole thing. Um, you now have a go at writing up your response. Now, as a minimum, one comparative paragraph and an introduction, kind of like I did. But if you really want to challenge yourself, give yourself 40 minutes and see if you can write a whole essay with a couple of minutes at the end to just check over your work. So thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully see you after lockdown.